understanding such a warm welcome. Uh, Pope Francis and I just had a very fruitful uh, meeting uh, this morning and covering wide ranging of uh, issues affecting our world debates. Climate change is intrinsically linked to public health. Do much more. And we as religious leaders should let them empower us to do much more. To lead on in this agenda for change. To lead on in this convincing atmosphere we have today, but needs to be conveyed and also to be made visible in the world, in the many communities in which we live. Three principles, that is, the respect for the physical environment, a recognition of it, the respect for human dignity, which in modern parlance we may apply, of course, to the whole concept of uh, Kosho Iwano, you are the president-designate of the Japanese Buddhist community Risho Kusekai. Uh, I can simply note that uh, your community has had a long relationship with the Vatican. Uh, your grandfather was the, uh, I believe, sole Buddhist observer at the Vatican II, the Vatican Council II. So, uh, Reverend Koshoni Wano, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak with you here today. I would like to share with you some of the Buddhist perspective on the given th theme. Ryoanji is a Zen temple located in Kyoto, Japan. It is famous for its stone garden. At one corner of this stone garden, there exists a hand washing pot. On that pot is carved the phrase, I only know satisfaction. It points to an original satisfaction that is beyond ordinary pleasure and pain. It is an original satisfaction that is always present even in the midst of ordinary pleasure and pain. It makes clear that nothing can never make us happy without a satisfied heart and mind. Mere financial, material, social, or natural blessings can never make, it, make us happy if our hearts and minds are not satisfied on this more original and deeper level. A person who truly knows satisfaction is calm in heart and mind, and a person who does not know satisfaction is confused in heart and mind, told Shakyamuni Buddha. Buddha's teaching invites us to open ourselves to a deep paradox, namely, a poor person does not mean one who possesses nothing, but one who cannot be satisfied while possessing much. We should know that we already have enough because we exist. God and Buddha have already given us all that is needed by us. This phrase, I only know satisfaction, expresses the richness we already have been given. We must humbly turn into this original fullness if we are to address our current challenge of climate change. Sen no Rikyu, the great master of Japanese tea ceremony, noted that the central path of tea consists in the spirit of being satisfied with a house not leaking water and with enough food to avoid hunger. Preparing and serving tea when needed with not too much or too little takes time. It is first offered to Buddha, then served to guests, and finally one drinks. This is the spirit of welcoming the other, the awareness of the link between serving and one's own happiness. We have been sustained all our lives by receiving from the universe. 
Now we are facing the issue of climate change due to greenhouse gas house gases. This severe challenge cannot be met on the basis of human-centered fear. The challenge calls us to shift ground to return to our original human stance. We must respond on the basis of this profound religious experience of I only know satisfaction. This is a subtle point, let me spell it out, greed, fear, and insecurity do not provide a ground for solving the challenge of climate change. Rather, reclaiming that we are already blessed with what we truly need must be and must remain our starting point for addressing this challenge. Climate change is a severe challenge. Is it not, however, a message from the Earth? It invites us to return to our original selves, the ones God and Buddha offer. Perhaps the threat of climate change is an invitation to return to an authentic and, in that sense, original way of life. By this, I am not speaking against all that is good in our modern experience. Rather, I am focusing on our reclaiming our, in a religious sense, original experience. Instead of thinking about how to produce short-term solutions to them, we must have action programs with results measured in decades or even centuries. I believe that religious networks, such as Religions for Peace, will hereafter play increasingly important roles in promoting such long-term solutions. Why do I believe this? Because the answer to the challenge is to return to our authentic and true modes of being. Technical cures are necessary, but they will never suffice. Rather, we must return to our true selves, our original hearts and minds. My grandfather, Nikyo Niwano, the founder of our movement, Risho Kosekai, said that everything we receive is a gift from nature. We can never give rise to right faith without asking ourselves what is the purpose of our lives being supported by a great many things. We humans need to live in the awareness that our lives are fully interconnected and that we are being sustained by the web of all existing things. I continue to ask myself the question posed my grandfather. What is the purpose of our lives being supported by a great many things? Thank you very much.